Gen 4 SSDs are impressively fast, and apparently none more than this, the Patriot Viper VP4100. This drive can max out, if you rub it just right, at over 5.6 gigabytes per second, at least in reads anyway. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at it, see if it's worth your money, so do stick around. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So how does the VP4100 manage the impressive feat of being almost a gig a second than the existing Gen 4 drives like the shiny Aorus one or the absolutely mammoth Sabrent one? Well, it's not because of the controller. See, all of these drives, in fact, pretty much all Gen 4 drives you can find right now, all use the same Fizen E16 controller, which for all intents and purposes, and as I mentioned before, is basically just a de-restricted E12, so that you get a bit of an extra top-end performance, but most of the more real-world numbers, sort of down in the mid-range, haven't changed all that much. It's also not from better cooling. See, the included heatsink that comes pre-glued to the drive is absolutely minuscule by comparison. Have a look at the thicknesses of these drives, uh, especially the comparison between the VP4100 and the Sabrent one. I honestly think you could fit like five of the VP4100s in the same space that the Sabrent one occupies. But either way, does that mean that it runs hotter? Well, very impressively, no. The drive sat around about 30 to 40 degrees Celsius while just doing kind of basic writes and reads, and it took me about 10 minutes of writing to the drive, which, by the way, was um, over half of the capacity of the drive all in one go to get it to hit 70 degrees Celsius, which isn't even the 75 that it would take to start thermal throttling. So if it's not cooling or the controller, where does the performance come from? Well, it seems to be coming from the incredibly large SLC cache this thing has. Now, you can tell when the SLC cache fills up as the performance drops off a cliff. Now, the way I was testing that was my usual sort of stress test of the controller's reads and writes simultaneously, duplicating files on the drives. And basically, after about 300 or so gigabytes written all in effectively one run, the cache filled up and then dropped from about 1.4 to 1.5 gigabytes per second pretty consistently all the way down to about six or 700 megabytes per second. So a pretty big difference. Now I should note that even when you do fill up the cache and you get that degraded performance, it's still actually faster than any SATA SSD could be, which is kind of impressive. Now with that said, this uh, kind of exploit, if you like, is only really beneficial for very specific workloads with very specific use cases when the cache isn't full. Although honestly, you don't write three to 400 gigabytes worth of data all in one go to a one terabyte drive all that often at full speed. And so realistically, you can make use of this slight extra performance if it's a little um, on the top end side. The rest of the synthetic benchmarks tell the same story as pretty much any other Gen 4 drive. I mean, they're using the same NAND and same controller, so you would kind of expect them to. Uh, the story goes that the top end numbers are amazing, but the more real world tests of down at the bottom of Crystal Disk Mark and ASSSD show that there isn't all that much improvement over even a fairly good Gen 3 drive. But honestly, the biggest downside of the VP4100 is its price. In the UK, it's currently selling for about £220 for the one terabyte model, which if you compare that to the Sabrent drive, admittedly without its massive heatsink, that drive costs about 160 odd pounds. So that performance difference, honestly, there isn't much of it in the real world anyway, really makes it difficult to recommend this over the Sabrent drive. Now, with that said, pricing can vary. And by the time you watch this, this drive may be cheaper, or may be on sale. So I'm gonna leave a link to all three drives I talked about in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that can take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and when you watch this. So if you're after a great gen for a drive from a designed in USA company, then this might not be a bad shout. If you can find it on offer, you know, and deal or reduced price, this is still a great drive with fantastic performance that rivals pretty much any of the other drives that are on the market. 
With that said, if you're currently looking to buy right now, the Sabrent drive might be a slightly better value, considering that it's essentially the same drive from a slightly different manufacturer. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Which of the three drives would you pick if you're going Gen 4 and also would you bother going Gen 4 right now? Would you wait for a sort of better Gen 4 option or would you stick with Gen 3 or SATA? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. Now like I said at the start, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Like I said as well, you can also check out the links to the three drives I talked about in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos, then there is a load of other links that you can check out too. There's stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool new designs. There's Patreon if you want to get cool rewards and support me directly. There's also stuff like uh, different VPN options as well as Humble Bundle for cheap games to support charities and a load of other stuff too, so take a look. Otherwise, if you want to check out the reviews of the other drives, I'm going to leave the SSD reviews playlist over there and feel free to check out anything else you like on the channel too. Otherwise, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you all in the next video.